Hey everyone, I am back and I am very excited to introduce my next guest. Now for over 15 years, Shannon Graham has helped leaders change the world by doing the impossible. He believes that through the synergy of transformational coaching and collaboration, we can usher in an age of unprecedented peace and prosperity to the world. Shannon's first book, The Revolution of Self, focused on helping individuals find and fulfill their potential and purpose. His latest book, Expand, focuses on what he describes as the new era of leadership. At the end of the day, Shannon's passion is seeing people thrive to their utmost. Now, Shannon talks a lot about changing the world by doing the impossible, and he does things so differently. So, Shannon, I am excited to dive in. Shall we yeah. just kickstart? Let's do it. <laughs> Where do we begin? Golly. Um, you know, I, I think where we begin is um, at this very interesting uh, intersection that we're coming up to in the world, which is um, technology is growing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And what is necessary for us to get the most out of this technological boom that's happening is for us to expand culturally and individually um, in, in harmony with that expansion of technology. Um, mm. And the reason is simple. Because um, a computer is only as smart as the person that's using it. Mm. The, a computer can only create something as beautiful or as profound or as excellent as the person using it. Mm -hmm. And so um, the danger is that we're on the potential of a world that has very amazing technology that has, um, that, that has unlimited capabilities and um, kind of very limited people engaging with it. Right. So it's not a match. Right. Um, so that's, that's the first piece of the puzzle. The second is, uh, automation is going to change everything. Millions upon millions of jobs are going to be gone. Mm. And for the first time in history, the middle class will be larger than the poverty class. Mm. And so there's going to be a lot of shifts going on. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that, that thought they had job security for the rest of their life and now don't have a job and are mm -hmm. wondering what to do. And I think it's beautiful because most people are in jobs that they're really not truly passionate about. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, all you have to do is look at the data. Um, employee happiness is 13% worldwide. Wow. That's pretty bad. Yeah. And so what's, hap what's going to happen is all the jobs that people really don't want to do are going to go away. So people won't have a choice. They'll, they'll almost have to do something that's closer to their passion and they'll have to uh, improve them, their skills and, and themselves um, to really survive in this new landscape. And so uh, it's a very exciting world that we're living in. And um, I believe leadership is at the forefront of it. Mm. I love that you brought that up actually, because technology has changed everything, right? And the reason that personal development and this even this rise to pursue your passion has, has come into the forefront is because we're able to see more people actually doing it yep. through technology, Yep, which is interesting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So tell me more about what you see in terms of the future of leadership, because I know you have some strong opinions on that. Sure. Um, well, there's two parts to it. I believe that leadership first and foremost is what I call personal leadership which means whether you run an organization or you just have your own life that you're living, um, you're a leader either way. And there is this kind of um, skirting of this idea of, of that I'm a leader, even if I don't own a company. Mm -hmm. uh, most people think leadership is, is solely about you have employees under you and you have this big vision. You can be a leader if you're 16 years old and you're just, going day to day through high school. Mm. So personal leadership, I believe, is going to be at the forefront of really taking humanity to the next level because it, 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 a large part of it is responsibility. Mm -hmm. Taking responsibility for their lives and for their emotions and for the, the outcomes that they want to create. Um, so that's part one on, on what I call a personal um, 
leadership standpoint. Part two is from an organizational standpoint, right now, by and large, what you see a lot of is leaders looking at organizations going, that's not right. That's not right. This needs to get better. What can we do with them self excluded right. to make that better, to change that? And how do we maybe bring, bring in Shannon Graham or bring in Ruby or bring in somebody mm-hmm. from the outside to help, which is an okay idea, mm-hmm. but it misses the point completely mm. because a company can, a company is just a reflection of the leader. Right. And so if there's something not working in the company, mm-hmm. then usually that's a sign that something within that leader is missing mm-hmm. or not hitting the mark or not aligned or not fully developed or something. Mm-hmm. And so the place to look is always the founder. And we see great examples of companies that have terrible leadership and what that creates. Mm-hmm. And we see examples that have amazing leadership and what that creates. So it's a very clear delineation between the two. Right. And so as far as there's a, there's, a, there's a new wave of responsibility that's coming to the forefront of companies as well, of being um, sustainable and being economically, uh, environmentally friendly, um, being good to their workers, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these things people are starting to care about. Consumers are starting to care about, and they're, they're starting to demand that of brands. And leaders are transcending what I would call a one dimensional mindset of like, Hey, let's just make a bunch of money to like, Hey, it's what I, uh, it's what I call a, a, a quad, uh, yeah, quadruple bottom line, mm. which is people, profit, planet, uh, and principle. Mm-hmm. You have a, a triple bottom line is pretty common, um, right. not common, but it's this new kind of trendy thing, which is people, planet, profit. Right. Cool idea. The one thing that gets left out by and large is the leader. Mm -hmm. If you look at most founders of these companies, they are burnt out. They uh, are, they're fulfilled, but not in an, in a funny way. Mm -hmm. Um, Typically their health is not great. Their relationships are not great. Their family life is not great. Mm -hmm. And it's because they've subscribed to this idea of sacrifice. Right. If I have this big vision, if I have this big movement, then I need to sacrifice these things in order to move it forward. Mm -hmm. Um, which is interesting. Here's, here, if there's like one quotable moment of this entire interview, Ruby, this is it. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that you have people like Elon and, and Steve Jobs that are like, that want to go to Mars and want to do things that have never been done before. They believe that it's possible to do the impossible. And yet they believe it's impossible to have a balanced life. Hmm. Isn't that funny? Can we go to Mars? We've never done before. Elon's like, oh, of course. And then you look at his family life or you look at some of these other pieces and it's like, well, it's, but it's not possible to do that, but it is possible to do that. And it's like, come on. So it's really just a a paradigm shift Mm -hmm. of it's all possible. And it's about people waking up to the idea of not only is it possible, but you will become a better leader because your employees will see that it's not just about work. There's more dimensions to it. There's fulfillment, there's happiness, there's family, all of these things make a better employee at the end of the day. Right. Because if you're not happy or fulfilled in one sphere of your life, that is going to definitely bleed into or be reflected in other spheres. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And I mean, you know, we've, we see, you can, I'm just a good, I'm just a good observationalist. You can see examples of this to whatever level of severity you, you really want to see all the way up to people uh, jumping off of buildings in China, killing themselves because the work conditions are so bad. Mm-hmm. And then all the way down to something more mild, like people are just kind of generally checked out at work mm-hmm. because they work too much. They're not really passionate about it. They kind of put in the minimum effort and that's that. Right. Neither are acceptable in this new era moving forward. And so, yeah, it's really about leaders understanding that, first of all, the game is multidimensional. And mm-hmm. in order for the, to be successful in that game, that means they must be multidimensional in order to bring forward kind of a model because leader, a leader has one job. Most people think it's to get people to follow them or to create followers. It's not. Mm-hmm. The number one job of leaders is to create more leaders. Mm-hmm. And so the only way to do that, the best way to do that is to be an example of whatever it is you're trying to lead people to, whether it's excellence or fulfillment or all of the above. 
Right. And so in this new era, you're going to see a lot more of people shifting that and kind of putting the brakes on things and saying, wait, let's take a different, a, a different approach. Let's mm-hmm. play a different game. Yeah. And we're already starting to see that with the way that things are shifting, right? That's people right. are quote unquote waking up yep. and realizing like, okay, I've achieved this, 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 and this, everything that I've been wanting to achieve. And yet here I am still feeling unfulfilled That's or right. here I am still struggling with my relationships or here That's I right. am still not enjoying my life. I'm not having fun. Yep. And I feel like it's that moment when people reach that moment, that is the deeper awakening of like, okay, what else can I do? But that really requires a certain level of, of self-awareness. Does it not? It does. Like, I feel like there's what you're describing. There must be so many people out there leading. Yeah. But lacking the awareness to even comprehend why things aren't working. Sure. hundred percent. The majority of them. Right. So yeah. how do they even start to, you know, maybe some of our listeners are these people, like how do they even start to open up to realizing what's going on? Well, there's, there's a, there's a couple ways. The first is, um, especially if they're listening to this to simply listen to themselves. How do you feel on a, on a holistic standpoint? How do you feel? How you feel our, our feelings are our number one indicator of how we're doing. We have traded our kind of natural navigation system, which is our feelings, for something that is much more one-dimensional, which is our possession and our position, Mm -hmm. especially in Western culture. Mm -hmm. Our possession, what do we possess? How much stuff do we have? Right. And our position, where are we? Mm -hmm. Am I above you? Those are indicators of how I'm doing which are terrible indicators because Mm -hmm. they're not accurate at all. Because you said there's plenty of people that have great position and plenty of possession and feel like total crap. Mm -hmm. And then there are people in second and third world countries that have less than nothing and are super happy Mm -hmm. and connected, right? And fulfilled. Right. So it's, it's just a bad measuring stick. It's the wrong way to measure. Mm. Um, So for people that are listening to this, I'd encourage them to check in with how they feel and use that, use that as a measuring stick for how they're doing. And then people who are not listening to this, unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, they, what's going to happen is because you're right, it is starting to emerge. It's starting to happen mm-hmm. already. And more and more examples of this will happen. And the only reason that it's got so far in the first place is because there are so few examples of how to do it a different way. Right. So people just think that the way that it's been done is the way that it is done. Mm. But there's a difference. The way that it has been done is not necessarily the way that it is done. It's just the way that it has been done. Right. And so there's not a lot of examples of the opposite or, or something different. So people just kind of go along with the status quo. But sooner than later, there will begin to be more and more and more and more examples. And people go, wait a minute, that that guy's doing something very different. Like it's just very obvious that that guy feels different than me. What's going on. And that natural inquisitive nature will come up. Um, and, and they'll start to question things and, and maybe ask people like yourself or like me questions uh, with a willingness to say, Hey, you know what? I think there's something different. I think there's a new game we can play here. Right. Let's, let's crack into that. And do you think the evolution of our planet and, and, you know, human consciousness and our people has played a massive impact in that? Because, you know, like if we think about our parents' generation or our grandparents' generation, I mean, they grew up believing most, for the most part, believing everything requires hard work. If you want success, it's hard work. If you want all these things that you want to achieve, it's going to mean sacrificing these other things. You know, it's kind of like that old school mentality, but I'm wondering if there's like, if the evolution of our people on our planet has really played an impact to shifting this uh, system. Oh, hundred um, percent. Well, here's, here's the bottom line. Um, without going too far into it, um, our parents and especially our grandparents, where our parents got their work ethic from was our grandparents. Well, our grandparents and their grandparents came like founded this country, mm. the United States literally built it. Like they Mm -hmm. were the builders of this country. They laid the railroad all the way. Can you imagine laying a railroad all the way across the freaking country? It's insane. 
that's a big job. Right. Can you imagine building all the streets in New York City and Boston and California? Like someone had to make all those streets, all the buildings, like all of that happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Hard work was the currency of the day. That, that was how you earned your merit. If you were a hard worker, you had to work hard because you literally had to fucking build shit. Mm-hmm. We live in a different world now. It's all built. It's all there. Like we don't have to build roads anymore. It's all like we just have that luxury. Mm-hmm. So hard work is kind of that season is over. Now yeah. it's not to take away from hard work. It's important to work hard in certain context. Right. However, what we're starting to see is the emergence of magic. Mm. We're moving from the season of mule to magician. Mm. Tell me more about this. Yeah. Well, the mule's work, uh, the the mule's value is based on its work Mm -hmm. um, and primarily its time. Mm -hmm. A magician's value is based purely on its ability to produce results. Mm -hmm. So for example... Um, you know, a worker back in the day, they would punch the clock and they were there for 10 hours a day or 12 or whatever. And that's how they earned their, their value. Just, it was time. They, they did jobs that for the most part, anyone could do. It was just about sitting down and doing it. Um, if you could do jobs that other people couldn't do, you got paid a little more and your position was a little higher. Mm-hmm. Being a magician is completely different because it's not the value that you create as a magician is not relative to time. Hmm. And, and in fact, time is not relative to value at all. Um, it just happened to be that in that season, it was. That's how we measured it. Right. But that's not accurate. It's kind of like how we measure time right now. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to bet at some point in the future, we'll measure time completely differently because mm-hmm. we just kind of made it up as it is. Right. And so, so we're starting to see this emergence of people, for example, that are making huge sums of money in incredibly short amounts of time, Mm -hmm. shorter than ever in history. And it's like exponential. It's like for all of history, it took this much time to make this much money. And then Mm -hmm. now all of a sudden people are making this much money in this much time. Yeah. It's flipped um, because we're starting to embrace more of the magician. And Mm -hmm. this is powerful from a human consciousness expansion standpoint, because the fundamental question that I always return to is, what is the peak of human potentiality? Hmm. How far can we go? Right. Internally, how far can we go? How much can we be? Mm-hmm. How much do we have the capacity to be? I believe at whatever the peak is, it's far beyond like being a hard worker. Right. right? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, is there even a peak? Well, that's, that's a great question. I don't know. We'll, we'll never know, I don't think, um, but hopefully we can get close to finding out. Yeah. But the bottom line is just kind of rolling up your sleeves and doing the work is, is kind of like a very rudimentary, fundamental level way of being mm-hmm. compared to our potential. Right. Right. There are, there, I mean, there are ancient civilizations that could manifest at will, literally at will, just think it and it was there. Mm -hmm. And so like that's in the vein of what we're moving towards more of our potential, more of our internal capacity rather than just like how much harder can we work? Right. So more of the internal expansion versus like, let's focus on expanding everything outside of us, our lives, our businesses, our clientele, our products, whatever it is. Yep. And that's really interesting because I mean, I think that there's a lot of people who are too scared to expand on themselves. Of course. Right? Because some of that work is actually, in fact, and, and you and I know this very well because we're in it, is some of the toughest work you'll ever put yourself through. Oh, it is. It is the toughest work. But it's also the most rewarding. For sure. And, and not only that, but it's also the most needle moving. Mm. Um, what I mean by that is I, I think of it like alchemy, mm-hmm. right? If you're a magician, then alchemy is, is your game. Mm-hmm. So I think of it like most people that are beginning to lean into this idea of alchemy, this idea of magic over being a mule, have the ability to turn lead into bronze currently. Mm-hmm. They're starting to lean into it. They kind of understand it. People can bring their bronze, their, you know, their lead to them and have it turn into bronze. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. 
the process, the, the number one thing that people that are in that magician position can do is give themselves time and space to develop their alchemy. Hmm. So it's not about learning more magic. It's about taking the magic you have and deepening it. So now mm. you go from having the ability to turn lead into bronze to lead into gold. Mm. Gold is significantly more valuable than bronze. Right. Right. So it's about internally alchemizing so that your value, the, va the same amount of, you can create more value in the exact same amount of time. I'm a perfect example with this. If you sit down with me for an hour now and work with me on um, doing the impossible, the mm -hmm. value that I can create for you in that amount of time is infinitely higher than 15 years ago when I started. Mm -hmm. Because over that time, I've continuously alchemized my ability to turn lead into bronze, to turn lead into gold, to turn lead into platinum, to turn lead into Bitcoin, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's something that I think so many people bypass nowadays too, because we live in such a fast paced environment. Mm -hmm. You know, people want what they want and they want it today because we are in an era where we can achieve immediate results on a lot of things. Yep. It's a lot of aspects of our internal growth and expansion. They aren't necessarily immediate. That's right. And so when people, you know, say that they become like personal development junkies or seminar junkies or event junkies and training junkies, and they just get all the trainings and all the, the things, yep. but they don't really take the time or create the space to integrate sure. and to implement. Yep. And I feel like that's like one of the biggest, most crucial missing pieces in leadership today is people are bypassing the implementation and the integration of everything that you've learned. Yeah. And, and that's only slowing them down. Yeah. You know, that's only holding them back. And also, you know, the people that they're meant to, to act as a catalyst for. That's right. That's right. I think there's a deeper conversation here, which is if you are someone who has a, a true calling to serve the world, then you must adhere to this kind of formula that I created, which is the highest probability of the deepest impact, mm. right? So think of it like this. If you and I are working together and you, you deserve and you, uh, the world at large would benefit from you getting the best results possible, the best, then I owe it to you if I really want to serve you, I mm -hmm. owe it to you to go within and figure out how I can continuously up-level that magic that I can bring to you. Mm -hmm. Because if you said, Shannon, I want you to help me do the impossible, I said, that's great. I can turn lead into bronze. And you're like, wow, that's really good. But what if I said I could turn lead into gold? Isn't that better? Right. Don't I owe you that? Don't, wouldn't, wouldn't you receiving that much more transformation not only be good for you, but be good for the rest of the world somehow, some way? Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course it will. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up because I, you know, it's something for me, I look at it as my divine responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, to continuously expand. Totally. I, so that I can show up in greater ways and be of greater service to the That's people right. that I'm here to serve. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I think it's a two, it's a two, two front approach. I think there is a divine responsibility that we have to expand as much as we can so that mm -hmm. we can serve as best we can. Mm -hmm. I also think that from a personal standpoint that just we as individuals deserve to, to be that version of ourselves mm -hmm. because there are challenges that come along with it. Um, but there's also new levels of kind of like self that come with it. That's very powerful just from an individual standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that's, and just from personal experience, that's very rich. There's a lot that I get from that just personally. So not only do you deserve it, but I deserve it. Mm -hmm. And that way we both can really benefit from that. Yeah. I found that a lot of it has been my natural just curiosity, which has gotten me this far. Yep. You know, I always reflect back in my life and think, wow, like I was able to go through that or experience that or create that. Imagine what else could become possible yeah. if I continue to deepen my practice and right. deepen my relationship to self? It's like this natural curiosity that keeps me going. Yep. But I find 
there are so many people who either haven't tapped into that yet mm-hmm. or you know they they accomplish something massive they they reach a huge milestone and then the ceiling drops yeah you know what i'm talking about i do the ceiling drops and they're just like oh it's either like some sort of fear of success or something has come in the way and yep. and they've now just ultimately stunted their own growth yep yeah, happens all the time. Yeah, 100%. why, why and, do you feel that happens? Well, it's, it's a funny question because I believe that the same reason that people don't even expand in the first place mm-hmm. is, the same people, is the same reason that people expand and then hit the top and then drop back down. Interesting. It's the same reason. Um, and it has to do with worthiness. Mm-hmm. It has to do with how, it, how, how enough they feel. Um, so we can look at it from both sides. People who don't even start in the first place, just don't even, don't even have the capacity to go there because they just don't feel like they're worth it in the first place. Mm-hmm. And then some people can at least buy into it enough to get going. Mm-hmm. And then they hit that milestone. And then all that, all of a sudden that milestone opens up doors for them and realities and versions of themselves that they've never experienced before. Mm-hmm. And that immediately butts up against their, story of how things should be and what they're worth Mm. and it's in direct contradiction right and they go right and just shut down most of the time yeah yep and so how do they get out of that uh well both both ways is the same solution i encourage people before they even get started on an endeavor to again to go deep within themselves to find that place because unworthiness is an illusion. Mm -hmm. It's just an illusion. Right. The simple way to, um, to prove that is that when you look at how parents treat a child, when it first comes into the world, Mm -hmm. the love that they give to that child is unconditional. Mm. It's unconditional. Mm -hmm. That child has not produced or performed or, been a good boy or girl or whatever they're Mm -hmm. just there Mm -hmm. no conditions no reason just all of the love and so if that's a metaphor for how we should treat ourselves, which i believe that it is then unworthiness is just a, a typically a pile of stories that we either get from other people and or ourselves that we kind of mask or i think of it like if you if you have a hundred dollar bill and you put a one dollar bill over it and you stare Mm -hmm. at it long enough you forget that the hundreds underneath. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of about peeling the $1 off and then maybe like throwing it away or, you know, putting it in your back pocket to really see what's there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting how everything always seems to come down to our worth. It, everything. I mean, it, it all is everything, relationships, money, happiness, right. success. It's all, you can only expand to the degree which you deserve which you believe you deserve. That's, mm-hmm. that's it, period. Mm-hmm. The lottery is a perfect example. People who win the lottery, the major, the vast majority of them within 12 months are financially back to the mm-hmm. same or worse place. Why? Because internally nothing changed. They have right. this old blueprint of like, I got all this money, but I'm, I'm not worth it. Like I need to get rid of it. Now they're not consciously thinking that, but obviously that's what happens. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, that is really amazing. And it's really important for our listeners to fully understand that and hear what you're, ha- what you're saying right now. The flip side that you don't hear people talk about much though, because a lot of people know about the curse of the lottery and people win the money. and right. it. We hear that one a lot. But we, what we don't hear a lot about is old money. If you look at old money, people that have generational old money wealth, mm-hmm. like lots of money, but more money than you could spend in a lifetime. Mm-hmm they're very tight with it. Mm -hmm. They do not just spend it like crazy because they had to go through the internal process of who to be and how to be and to expand into all those edges and and everything that comes with that in order to not only create that, but to hold on to it. Mm. So if you watch how those people operate, it's very, very different. Mm -hmm. It's for a good reason. And so are we now then trying to find that middle ground between the two? Yes, totally. Right. 100%. So, so what does middle, that middle ground look like? Well, the middle ground is how can I be saturated into my worthiness 
and my magic. Mm. Because the old money also kind of buys into like, you just got to put in the time and it'll take a long time. And by the mm-hmm. end of your life, you'll have a million bucks and it'll be great. Yeah. And then you die. And right. So, right. you know, it, it works for sure. Um, but yeah, the new, the new era is, is like, yes, magic exists. Magic is real. We can, we can do some things very rapidly and we can do it from a place that's not hustle. That's not grind. That's not me trying to like perform for my value. Like I'm going to do really good for Ruby. So she thinks I'm really good. Mm -hmm. Nope. My value is absolute and I don't need you to Mm -hmm. affirm that. So we can get past that. We don't have to play that game together and we can get above that onto something better. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the game. I love that. And that's a really powerful mantra too. My value is absolute. Huge. Yeah, huge. So what do you see then being the biggest piece of advice that you could offer to leaders who are feeling this this lack, this whether it's the lack of fulfillment, the lack of happiness, what is like the biggest piece of advice you can give them just to get started on the right track? Yeah. I think the important thing that everyone gets to be reminded of is that we are all masters at manifestation. Mm -hmm. All of us, regardless of what possession you have or position, we're all masters of it. We're just creating different stuff. And so if you're not happy, if you're feeling lack in some areas, then congratulate yourself because you created it. Mm-hmm. Say, wow, that well done. Look at how much chaos I've created. Look at how much <laughs> lack I've created. Well done. Wow, my marriage, geez. Right? Mm-hmm. And then pause on that and then simply ask yourself, what do I want from here? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the next chapter of a book, right? It's like, okay, that, that chapter was called Lack and Scarcity. Mm-hmm. We did it. Good job. Yeah. We can close the we can close that chapter. We can we can put the final period on that and we can move on. That that story, that book is closed. We're gonna start a new book now. And the new book is called Expansion. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? Here's the funny part. When you ask people what they want, mm-hmm. what do they default to most of the time? Most what people they, say I want to be happy. What they don't want. What they don't want, of course. What they don't want. What they don't they're want. they're fixated on it. They're fixated on, well, I don't want to experience this. I don't want to have this. I don't want this anymore. Yep. I don't want this to happen anymore. It's amazing how many people will not give themselves permission to feel what they really want. Mm-hmm. And that has to do with worthiness. It also has to do with our society a little bit, kind of makes it selfish to want what you want. Mm-hmm which is totally untrue Mm -hmm. to give people the space for, for a leader, for a person to just get still and say, what do I want? Okay. I'm, I've done the chapter. I've done the book of what I don't want. Mm -hmm. Got it. What do I want? And then that, that weirdness starts to come up. That awkwardness starts to come up and just sit with it and let it pass. And then let what's really there come out. Mm -hmm. Here's what I really want. This, this, this. Great. Well, you have evidence you're a master manifester, so go to work. Mm -hmm. Right? People put so much thought and energy and emphasis on what they don't want and it shows up. Well, that's Mm -hmm. just, that's not good or bad. It's just an indicator that you're a master creator. So good. Use that same thought. Use that same energy. Use that same attention on what you do want, but first give right. yourself permission and space to really figure out what that is. Cause most people don't have any clue. Yeah. I always say that, you know, the majority of people are running away from what they don't want, which is yep. why they keep running into what they don't want again and again and again. 100%. Right? Yep. And the reason that they're not running towards anything is because they don't even, they haven't even stopped yep. and given themselves the space or their permission to think about, well, what is it that I do want to run towards then? Because when you have a clear picture of what you want to run towards, it's so much easier to run in that direction. Of course. Yeah. And it's more fruitful. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so, um, Shannon, I mean, I could talk for hours with you. Yeah. I really could. Likewise. Um, but we are nearing the end of this episode. Okay. Um, so at the end of every episode, I always like to ask my guests if they would share a love punch with our listeners. And a love punch is really just a punchy 
piece of advice, affirmation, mantra, whatever you want to call it, yep. something short, punchy, and to the point that really sums up what you just had to share today? Yeah, well, I, I think there's two parts to it. First of mm -hmm. all, your potential for expansion is unlimited mm -hmm. and your value is absolute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really breathe that in, people. Like really, really breathe that in. Thank you so much, Shannon. You're you welcome. dropped a shitload of wisdom on this episode. And I am just so grateful. And I think it was just so timely with the era that we are now all in and yeah. with what so many people are feeling right now. Yeah. So yeah. Shannon, how can people stalk you online? Uh, um, well, <laughs> the good old Facebook is a great way. Yeah. Um, and my website, Shannon Graham. Cool. And I will share those links in the show notes. Um, so thank you again, Shannon. It has been a pleasure. And um, to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Love Punch, where I'm challenging thought leaders, influencers, and entrepreneurs like you to make a lasting impact. If you dig this episode between me and Shannon, please share it with a friend and don't forget to hit subscribe. If you have any questions, just want to say hi, drop me a line online. I can be found everywhere at I am Ruby. And I will see you back here next week for a brand new episode of Love Punch.